Oh, I don't really, I don't usually drink this much. This may be a disaster. I, I'll have to look at it later. One more, all right. This one's to you. <laughs> Welcome back everyone, I'm Tyler. Today on What Nerds, I'm gonna show you how I built this really cool drinking game. Let's go ahead and take a look how it works. All right, so the way this works is you try and swing the ring that's on this rope up over this hook. And every time you do, see if I can get it. I might cut this, ah, see sucker, I got it. Um, every time you do, you move the shot glass towards your opponent. And if you get it all the way off the board, you know, like I make it right here, ah, I did it again that person has to drink at this point and you just keep going so if i made one boom and it moved over here and then they make one they move it back towards me and it continues in that until you get it off and dude it can get pretty intense just saying and the cool thing about mine that i didn't see in any other plans is i used threaded inserts and some of these hex bolts to make it come apart so instead of trying to store it like this which is ridiculous all the pieces come down. Well, I also have these magnets that I bought that I plan on using some CA glue, I think, and just adding them to certain parts here. And that way they'll all be magnetized together. Or, you know, maybe just put them in a bag. I don't know, just some sort of storage solution. That way it's not this big awkward thing. Really cool thing about this is I think it only took about 45 minutes to put together. I had to do some thinking, so it'll probably be anywhere from like 20 to 30 minutes for you. But let's go ahead and jump in the build. First cuts I measure out are for the base at 18 inches. These two 1x4s ended up being pretty warped and happened overnight, so I ended up going with plywood. But this is how you'd want to rip them in order to join them with glue afterwards. As you can see, they fit together really well after ripping. And when it comes to gluing them up, you can use painter's tape to hold them together um, as the glue cures or clamps. It's really up to you. Applications like this, strength really isn't that critical. It's not like it's holding a lot of weight. It's more of like a decorative fun piece as it's just a game. But yeah, as you can see right here, it ended up being pretty warped. I knew plywood would be a great alternative. So I ended up ripping some plywood and I used 45 angles and beveled the edges just to give it kind of like a nice finished look. Sanded it down with 220. And as you can see here, nice and flat. And it really looks nice. This is a uh, maple plywood. Check it out, baby. Next step, I cut my one by twos. I'll have the, um, all the cuts and the dimensions in the description. And then I laminated them together um, for the upright column in the center, just to give it a little bit of a thickness and then beveled the edges on the top piece of the T. On the bottom of my plywood base, I made an X to get the center. And then I used my column here along with my speed square just to kind of square it up and then check my measurements to make sure it's centered and then I outlined the square here so I could kind of visualize what I'm doing and make sure this is all center. I ended up drilling a hole, I believe this is 3 8 inch hole, um, and this is going to correlate with the hardware that I have linked in the description and I countersunk so that this uh, screw will go through. And then I made X's on the upright column and this is gonna find center for me. I'm gonna drill a hole. This is where my uh, threaded inserts are gonna go. And this way, the, um, the game you can disassemble and store away somewhere. It's really awkward. It would be very awkward to store this thing as it's put together. So I thought this was a good idea. But here I am just assembling it and then I made my hole and countersunk for the top portion of the T where the swing will be. Now this is gonna be the shot ladder. Um, I used a two inch uh, Forzner bit for this. And to get the center of these boards, I used a trick I learned from Woodwork Web from Colin over there is you measure out six inches. You just find six inches however you can on the board. And then I found the three and that gives you the center and then you just connect those lines. So now I have a direct center line on this board. Now you'll see that I um, actually end up cutting out four indentations for the shot ladder but I ended up redoing this and doing five of the two inch holes uh, on a separate board and the spacing is going to be two inches from the edge and then every 
three and a half inches afterwards will be your center marks going forward. And this is kind of how it works, right? Every time you make a loop, you get to move the shot ladder or the shot glass towards the other person. And this is just me taking it apart. I'm gonna be adding my little eye hooks on the ends of the top piece. And you'll see that I have the hooks down there on the bottom, but that's a incorrect spot. That, that does not work, just so you know. Um, I had to use about, I used a, a random piece of uh, scrap that's about six inches and I did it on, uh, made my marks on one side and then the other, and then drilled for the center and then screwed these babies in. That's gonna be a pretty sweet spot um, right there. And after this, it was time for me to test to make sure that everything was set up right. And it's a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be, but freaking victory, man. Boom, I just gotta learn how to do this really well so I can get my wife all wasted. I've been really enjoying this Danish oil from Watco. This is the Dark Walnut. And not only does it give a really good color on pine, but it also protects the wood. So it's kind of like a all-in-one finish. You can add something to it afterwards if you want, but I think it's unnecessary for this application. But I'll keep this in the description for you guys to check out. I've, I've been really enjoying it. And here's the five space shot ladder, like I was saying. It's actually a requirement to have five. I don't know what I was thinking with four. You need a place to start in the center. So that way, as you start ringing them, you move the shots towards the other person. Instead of the washers, I ended up using these really nice rings. When it comes to playing this game, especially if you have players that haven't played it yet, it makes it a lot easier and a lot more fun. And I'll link these in the description below. Now that we're done, let's get back to old Boozy in the garage. And there you have it, you guys. Like I was saying, a really easy build, a really fun game to play. I saw this on some forums recently, and that's what inspired me to build it and they were saying that they sell a lot of them as well. So maybe an opportunity for something to put up in your shop, um, things that you can get some revenue from. Uh, if you're following me on Instagram, you'd see that my wife and I recently battled it out with this thing. She of course won, whatever, she's a cheater. Also check out the woodnerdshq.com website. It has uh, updates, blogs. I'm trying to use that space for a lot of things like situations where a video might be a little too much and I just want to write a blog post about something, maybe an update from builds before like this guy or my uh, workbench build, things like that. Um, as well as just like things in the life of, you know, being a woodworker or a YouTuber that you may be interested in. As a matter of fact, if you don't mind in the comment section below, drop a comment, man, say hi, let me know what you might want to be looking for in the future, either from here or on the website. Um, I'm really interested in putting some time aside and, and diving a little bit further into this thing. But thank you guys again for your support and for hanging out with me today. I'll see you next time. Oh, getting sloppy. <laughs>